the road to hell is paved with good intentions what is a real life example of this? The introduction of non-native species as a means of solving an environmental problem. Lobotomy. Surgery to fix the mentally unwell. It sounds so good, no more reliance on medication, you're good from now on. But it didn't work. The outcomes were awful and it was frequently done without any sort of consent. It all could have been shut down fairly quickly if people were honest about what was happening, but careers and money was at stake, so many unnecessarily suffered. Those parents who solve all their kids' issues and don't make them stress about consequences of their own actions. Their kids just turn into inept and entitled adults who still act 15 for decades and not only have a harder life for themselves but make life miserable for everyone around them too. To the beginning of any political journey I suspect. Keeping on trying to help someone so desperately that you lose sight of your own actions and end up hurting everyone around you by neglecting your own health and becoming overly defensive of that person, even insulting and attacking others for them. This can happen too fast when you fall in love with a bad person. The invention of social media. When Tom was working at Friendster, I genuinely believe he wanted to build something that allowed people to socialize and communicate in a new and modern way. On paper, early MySpace is a brilliant concept that made a lot of people realize the potential of the internet. This concept was that mutilated and turned into what social media is today. Quite possibly the single most socially damaging invention that ever happened. Far away from bringing people closer together, it has turned into a tool that is tearing people further apart, making them feel more disconnected with society than ever and instead of democratizing discussion, it has put even more power into the hands of the elite. Since the abysmal performance of American schools has been in the news recently, no child left behind and its replacement every student succeeds act. America has never had really good public education, but it used to be serviceable. NCLB came in to try and create some milestones and accountability. Instead it made the problem worse. ECSS came in and tried to address its problems, but changed the stuff that wasn't the problem and left the bad parts unscathed. Taken all together 57% of high school graduates can't read at a 7th grade reading level and over a quarter are functionally illiterate. I'll poke a little at my fellow leftists here. Plastic bags. Back in the late 90s there was a huge push for people to stop using paper grocery bags because of the amount of trees being cut down for paper. Unfortunately, it turns out the logging industry can be pretty sustainable, though not entirely faultless, and plastic bags are unrecyclable and so thin that reuse is uncommon. Instead contributing to massive amounts of plastic pollution in the environment. Another example is the protest against hunting white-tailed deer. Unfortunately we killed their natural predators, and hunting is an effective way of keeping their population at sustainable levels. Story My uncle took me and my brother in because he wanted us to get a good education. My mom and dad agreed as they knew that my uncle would be able to give us a better shot at making something of ourselves. My uncle's intentions were good. However, my uncle's wife made our lives hell. She basically mistreated us and my uncle was unable to do anything about it. So his inaction made him complicit. Even through the hardships, my brother and I still managed to get an education but my uncle's reputation was affected negatively. Family members don't see him the same way and his wife is really disliked, to put it mildly. It started with good intentions but it didn't end well for my uncle. Adobe Flash Harry Frederick Harlow, scientist. He wanted to prove that humans cannot survive without love and affection. He needed an animal that was sufficiently human-like and he settled on rhesus monkeys. Harlow's research went in a really dark direction. Harlow wanted to prove the importance of early social interaction in social development, and the importance of family and love, but his cruel methods ended up causing some of the monkeys to engage in self-mutilation or starve themselves to death. He raised the monkeys from birth with as little love and affection in isolation chambers for up to 24 months. They became empty shells of living animals. 
My mom called my Christian university, that 17-year-old me attended by my parents' behest, to inform the school that I was smoking weed, drinking, and having sex. She thought because it was a Christian university, they would put me into a counseling program to get me back on track. The school told me to pack my bags, leave immediately and they rescinded the 80% scholarship I obtained, causing me to owe the full 100% for that semester which I'm still paying off a decade later. Edit, this comment is getting a lot of traction so I figured I'd add another nugget. After getting kicked out of college, my 18th birthday was the next month. My parents somehow, my dad is a tech nerd so he could hack any account I had, found out that I was going to have a party at a friend's house to celebrate. There was alcohol and weed at the party. Lo and behold my parents called the state police and alerted them of the party. I and three other friends got arrested that night. Most charges were dropped or expunged eventually. Sheltering your kid from every possible problem. Haiti did not have cholera. A disastrous earthquake hit Haiti in 2010, after the earthquake humanitarian forces from the UN arrived to help, and the Nepalese contingent reintroduced cholera to Haiti. This epidemic has since infected approximately 850,000 people and killed over 10,000. The introduction of kudzu for erosion control. It has become invasive and girdles and kills plant life above ground without establishing proper roots, therefore causing soil erosion. George W. Bush admin created subsidies on corn to promote the production of ethanol to be used in fuel, etc. Better for the environment and so forth. Couple of downstream effects. Ethanol in fuel lowers the fuel efficiency, so you have to buy gas more frequently, more of an inconvenience, but that's why fuel with no ethanol is usually slightly more expensive. Corn sold for other purposes than ethanol didn't qualify for the subsidies, so there was a strong financial incentive to sell to ethanol producers instead of for food. This drove the price of food corn, and food that uses corn-derived ingredients, up, affecting poor people the most. The financial incentives were so strong that farmers were buying up cheap land in areas that were very unsuitable for corn production or switching away from crops that would grow more easily if they couldn't afford more land. In western Kansas, corn needs to be heavily irrigated in order to grow. There is an enormous aquifer that stretches from South Dakota to the Texas Panhandle. Increased irrigation combined with a years-long drought drained the aquifer to the point that the city of Hayes has to truck their water in. Edited to add line breaks. No child left behind. Most moral panics. Stranger danger, convincing people in the 1970-90s that hundreds of thousands of American children were being yoinked into random cars by evil strangers each year, while downplaying and underfunding the resources that could actually help decrease child abduction. Child abductions not only never came anywhere near those huge numbers, but it was and still is nearly always a custodial issue or a very close family member. Teaching people to be wary of kidnapping is great, directing all their fears toward vague spooky strangers and not helping people learn how to actually prevent kidnapping is kinda shit. The D.A.R.E program The R slash am I the asshole comments section